The story begins with a man undergoing a thorough security check at the airport. He appears to be annoyed, finding the procedure unnecessarily long. Upon passing through security and entering the lounge, he spots a rack of reading material and reaches for a magazine featuring the headline, The End of Civility, by Justin Sanderson. But just as he is about to grab it, another hand reaches for the same magazine. The second man recognizes the first as Justin Sanderson, the journalist who debates on TV and has been featured on the front page of newspapers. Justin decides to purchase the magazine as a gift for the man, who introduces himself as Joe Beaumont. After this short, unexpected meeting, Joe requests an autograph on the magazine and they part ways. As he prepares to board the plane, Justin calls his wife to tell her that he has witnessed significant events in life that caused him to have mental breakdowns, but now he feels it is necessary to understand himself and move forward from his past. His wife subtly suggests that his doctors have advised him to let go of the past and move on. Justin bids her farewell and begins boarding the flight, only to realize that he is boarding a flight that is numbered 10, 15, and surprisingly, the date is also the 15th of October, which is the 10th month of the year. It was originally scheduled to depart at 9.30, but got delayed until 10.15. Wondering what are the odds of this coincidence, anxiety slowly starts overcoming Justin, but his mood is momentarily eased when he exchanges greetings with the pilot. He specifically asks the pilot while boarding if the plane is well prepared for the flight, and Captain Donner offers reassurance about the flight's safety. Justin gets to his seat and finds out that a family had booked the wrong seat for their four-year-old child and children below two are only allowed to sit with their parents. As Justin's seat is next to the parents, he exchanges his business class seat with the child's and moves to the economy class. As he settles into his new seat, Justin notices Joe on the same flight and exchanges a nod of acknowledgement before getting comfortable in his seat. The flight attendant reminds passengers to fasten their seat belts and retrieve the safety pamphlet from their seat pocket. When Justin reaches for his pamphlet, he unexpectedly discovers an MP3 device labeled Enigmatique, containing a 30-minute recording. He looks for wired headphones in his seat pocket, but after failing to find them, he looks for them in the neighboring passenger seat pocket and finally finds them. The audio begins with a podcast announcing today's topic. The mystery surrounding Northern Gold Star Flight 10, 15. The host recounts how the flight started normally, with the attendants announcing safety instructions and heavy rainfall delaying the flight. Justin verifies these facts by checking the weather by peeking out of the plane's window. The host then reveals that the passengers were unaware that their aircraft would vanish from radar within an hour, never to be seen again. The podcast host, Rodman Edwards, then introduces himself and discusses the ominous signs surrounding the flight. He explains that he has covered various other aviation conspiracies on his podcast. But what makes Flight 10, 15 different, is the number of unusual signs it showed. He says the first sign was Captain Donner, and Justin is so immersed in the audio that he misses their pilot speech. Curious, he asks the neighboring passenger about the captain's name, only to find him unaware. Justin apologizes for the interruption, but urges the man to listen to the podcast, explaining its prediction of the flight's mysterious disappearance into the ocean. But because of Justin's strong insistence, the man becomes annoyed and switches seats. Justin, having no other choice, resumes listening to the podcast. Rodman continues, mentioning that the first sign was Captain Donner's observation of a flock of birds during the thunderstorm. Shortly after takeoff, around 1021, a report came in that a bird had collided with the engine of Flight 10, 15. Justin notices the time, precisely 1021, and hears the sound of an impact against the aircraft. Hastily, he tosses the MP3 player onto the seat and rushes to the bathroom. There he splashes water on his face, attempting to regain composure by reminding himself that the past is beyond his control. But he can control himself in the moment. Returning to his seat, Justin braces himself, swiftly pressing the call button to summon a flight attendant. Anxiously, he repeatedly clicks it, waiting for assistance. Finally, a flight attendant approaches him. Justin anxiously inquires if a bird has struck the engine. The attendant reassures him, explaining that the plane is flying at an altitude where encountering birds is improbable. Justin insists that the flight attendant ask the pilot about it, but the flight attendant advises him against troubling the pilot with such petty inquiries. Growing more and more agitated with each passing moment, Justin begins to question the flight attendant's careless attitude, drawing the attention of nearby passengers. Realizing he's causing a scene, he dismisses the flight attendant, but just as he leaves, 
Joe settles in the seat behind Justin. Joe reveals that it was a bird strike, speaking from his experience as a pilot. Despite Justin's worry, Joe reassures him, citing his acquaintance with Captain Donner, whom he praises as an excellent pilot. Joe adds that flight crews often don't warn passengers about such incidents to avoid unnecessary commotion. He also confides in Justin about his decision to quit flying due to irreversible mistakes. After Joe departs, Justin returns to the podcast. Rodman mentions further details about Flight 10, 15 including the pilot's last words, Good night, New York, before the plane vanished at 11.15 p.m. Justin pauses again, listening to the captain's announcement regarding potential turbulence due to the thunderstorm and his request for cooperation from passengers. As Justin digs deeper into the podcast, Rodman begins dissecting the minute details of the flight. He emphasizes that Flight 10, 15's tragedy resulted in the loss of 117 lives, underscoring the importance of analyzing every small detail. Justin, fully engrossed, grabs his notepad and starts jotting down notes. Rodman elaborates that many serious mysteries often stem from seemingly insignificant beginnings, such as mechanical failures, unusual behavior from flight attendants, pilots deviating from their usual protocols, or even phones of passengers interfering with the radar signals. Feeling compelled to investigate, Justin rises to check for any unusual signs. Except for two Sikh passengers engrossed in a cricket match, he finds nothing out of the ordinary. Concerned that their phone signals might cause an issue, Justin requests they turn off their phones. However, they assert that their phones are on airplane mode and advise him not to disturb them. When Justin insists, the flight attendants intervene, urging him to return to his seat. He reluctantly complies, resuming the podcast, where Rodman speculates about another potential factor, the presence of a prominent figure on board. One of the figures is Russian citizen Igor Orlov. He reveals that Igor was in witness protection and was flying to testify against the Russian mafia and wonders if the mafia had a role in the crashing of the plane. The second important figure was an air marshal from the FBI. He speculated the presence of a U.S. marshal on the flight was to safeguard Igor. Justin again approaches the flight attendant, explaining his urgent need to speak with the marshal on board. The flight attendant, annoyed with Justin's constant trouble, informs him that neither the crew nor the captain were informed of any marshal on the flight, indicating that the marshal likely hasn't boarded. Justin is returning to his seat, but instead encounters Joe and decides to sit beside him. Curious, Justin asks Joe if he's an undercover air marshal pretending to be a retired pilot, to which Joe responds in a negative way. However, Joe shares that the marshal's role is to identify deceptive behavior, suggesting that if Justin behaves suspiciously, the marshal will likely approach him. Taking matters into his own hands, Joe quietly moves closer to Igor, sneaking through his belongings and opening the overhead luggage compartment, causing a bag to fall on Igor. This startles Igor, who reacts aggressively and berates Justin, ready to get into a fist fight. Hearing the disturbance, the flight attendant rushes over and urges Justin to return to his seat. Ignoring her pleas, Justin openly voices his concerns about the Russian mafia targeting Igor, which would become the cause of death of all passengers, prompting other passengers to intervene. Captain Donner finally intervenes and warns Justin to return to his seat and not pose a threat to the plane's safety. As the commotion escalates, passengers begin filming, and Justin reluctantly retreats to his seat, feeling disturbed by his inability to find the marshal. As Justin continues playing the podcast, he hears Rodman mentioning another significant individual on board, journalist Justin Sanderson. According to the host, a video depicting the journalist causing a scene was uploaded online just moments before the plane vanished. Captain Donner discovers Justin still out of his seat and escorts him to the cabin crew, expressing concern that Justin might be experiencing a psychotic episode. However, Justin insists that in 14 minutes, Captain Donner must refrain from saying the words, Good night, New York. During the chaos, a woman seated across from Justin reveals herself as Alicia, the marshal, and restrains him for endangering the plane's safety. Alicia secures Justin in his seat, handcuffs him, and takes a seat beside him. He tries to explain the situation to her, insisting that he's not experiencing a mental breakdown, but Alicia dismisses his claims. Captain Donner then calls her away, allowing Justin to resume playing the podcast quickly. Rodman mentions that the lack of anxious social media posts suggested that passengers were unaware of the impending events. Suddenly, Joe takes Alicia's place beside Justin and tells Justin he believes in his story. 
Realizing Joe is a pilot, Justin suggests Joe can safely land the plane. However, Joe rejects the idea, explaining that he needs the access code to enter the cockpit. Justin swiftly suggests the code must be 10, 15. Joe acknowledges this but proposes a plan. Once inside, he'll lower cabin pressure and raise the temperature to induce sleep among the passengers, preventing panic. Handing Justin an oxygen cylinder, Joe assures him he'll summon him to the cockpit when it's safe. Entering the cockpit, Joe renders Captain Donner unconscious and assumes control, introducing himself as Captain Joe. This sparks chaos among the passengers, with flight attendants urging everyone to calm down and Alicia attempting to break the cockpit door. Joe executes his plan, causing passengers to drift into unconsciousness. Justin, utilizing his oxygen mask, navigates to the cockpit. From inside, Joe announces his newfound understanding of finding peace with the past and moving on, thanks to Justin's words. He pledges to help Justin achieve the same peace. As Captain Joe utters, Good night, New York, and reclines, Justin comprehends the grim truth that Joe caused the plane's demise, and Justin unintentionally became his accomplice. Helplessly, he watches as the aircraft plunges into the ocean. Later, Justin wakes up on the shore of an island, surrounded by wreckage and belongings from the crash. As he explores, he stumbles upon an MP3 player containing the remaining details of Flight 10, 15's mystery. He plays it, and Rodman reveals that rescuers searched for survivors fruitlessly for months until a cargo ship discovered them on foreign shores. Everyone was found alive except Justin Sanderson, who remained missing. Justin sighs in happiness that people survived his stupidity and looks up to notice a young boy glaring at him with hostility. As he approaches, he realizes the boy is merely one of many passengers from the ill-fated flight, all converging on him with anger and aggression. In his final moments, Justin attempts to prove his innocence, but the truth remains. He caused the disaster. He learns the harsh lesson that the road to hell isn't always paved with malicious intent. That's all for today, guys. Click to watch these two videos and keep on binging on some more sci-fi stories. See you next time.